Hello, everybody, and welcome to Schwab Coaching. Also, welcome to our virtual workshop on transitioning from Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim. I'm your host, Lee Bowl, joined by my partner in crime, Mike Fairborn. Hey, Michael. Hey, Lee. Great to be back with you. Good yeah. To again. Yeah. Yeah, here we are again, and we'll be here tomorrow as well for everybody. Yeah. Uh, just a few introductory notes before we get to either the disclosures or the actual presentation. Uh, you have Ben Watson, a very knowledgeable person with Think or Swim, in the chat. So he will. you can ask him any type of question, and he will do his best to answer it. If the answer to the question needs a demo, in other words, you want to see how you do it, then those will be collected. And we're going to do that in the last 30 minutes. Um, we'll get to some questions there, but the demonstration ones also, Ben will tell us uh, which ones need a demonstration, and then we'll do it. So that'll be the Q&A part. The presentation will be about 55 minutes to an hour. And then the last half hour will be the question and answer period. Again, with the demos, if we need it, uh, Ben will tell us which ones. All right, so let's continue here. Uh, your hosts, again, I'm Lee Bowl. Uh, you can follow me on X at, at Lee Bowl CS, then Michael Fairborn. You can follow him at Mike Fairborn CS. Mike has over 15 years of experience with Thinkorswim, so I'm going to be asking him a lot of questions. The way we set this up is that I play a new Thinkorswim user who had been using Street Smart Edge. So I get to ask Mike a lot of dumb questions um, that will hopefully, uh, the same way I learned it, I'm going to ask him the same questions the way that uh, I learned it as well. So I'm going to be not the smartest person today. Um, so with that said, we have a few disclosures here. Uh, we will be covering options today because we're going to be drilling down on some of the trading tools. And options do cover a high, uh, have a high level of risk and are not, not suitable for all investors. Certain requirements must be met to trade options at Schwab. Uh, if you're doing multiple leg strategies, keep in mind that that involves multiple commissions. Also, if you buy an option and you're long that option, and in other words, you own it, it's possible that you could lose 100% of your funds invested. Also, spread trading must be done in a margin account. And it is possible that if you have a short option, Prior to maturity, you could be exercised at any time. And writing uncovered options uh, involves unlimited risks. Uh, the information we're covering today is for general information purposes and should not be considered recommendations. We will be using stock symbols today, obviously, to show some of the uh, functionality and some of the concept. They are not recommendation. We will also be using the paper money software application. That is the uh, if you will, paper trading side of Thinkorswim. But keep in mind that results achieved on the paper money side do not always transfer to the live side because of changing market conditions. Also, for sake of simplicity today, will not include the effect of commissions, taxes, or fees. Investing does involve risks, including lots of principal and past performance is a never guarantee of future success. So, session one yesterday, we went over kind of in a broad way, setting up and navigating Thinkorswim, the desktop platform. Today, we are going to drill down in much more detail in several different areas. Uh, the monitor tab, which will be kind of similar to the account tab on Street Smart Edge. The trade tab, we'll go over the trading box on Street Smart Edge and see how you do those same things on Thinkorswim. And finally, my favorite part, the charts tab. Uh, again, we'll show you a couple things that on Street Smart Edge, that how to do those same things on Thinkorswim. All right, so let's get started. And what I'm going to do is pull up Street Smart Edge. And we're going to start with the uh, monitor tab on Thinkorswim, which is very similar to the account box here. So I'm going to make this big. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at positions. And I put a 
couple of positions in this demo account here. I'm in demo mode on Street Smart Edge, uh, for those of you who know what that is. And what I want to ask Mike is, how do I get this same information on Thinkorswim? So I'm going to go over to Thinkorswim now, and Mike's going to answer that question. And we're going to be going back and forth. So we're going to go over to Thinkorswim. We're in the paper money side. As you can tell, it says simulating trading at the upper left. PM means paper money. And Michael, I see some positions here, but but help me here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so we've got some positions listed down below. Uh, those columns can be adjusted, right, and uh, tailored to whatever uh, traders, investors might want, our clients. Uh, and what we can do uh, to adjust those is we can actually, so in that particular section, we can go right into uh, an area at the top where we can select uh, in that, first of all, let's just, just check that uh, that hamburger type icon real quick. Right here? Yeah, or just the double tick. Okay. That one okay. there, yeah. Just to make sure, uh, if we wanna go, we, we'll need to go into the new layout. Folks, you might have the old layout, which is a set layout. Now, there is some flexibility around changing those columns right there under the old layout. You have to do that in the area that Lee showed yesterday up in the setup area, the setup box. Those can be changed and those can be altered. Exactly, yep, under uh, uh, those uh, application settings, if you wanna change those uh, precisely, Lee. In fact, it would be under there, I believe it's positions, right there, yep. uh, third one down. Mm -hmm. And there you go, old layout uh, defaults at the very top. And notice, uh, Lee, you've got uh, just the options set up there, uh, yep. option Greeks. You do you do get yeah you get one additional choice and there it is if you want to do a stock <laughs> so uh, and it will change it to a stock. Uh, All right, but if we want to do more customizations, what do we need to yes. do now then? Yeah, so you might run into that, but a few years back they changed it to a new layout, which totally opened that up, and that's exactly what you're leaning in towards, Lee. And you've got it right there. So yeah, so within the the uh, new layout, we've got columns there. And uh, they can be adjusted. There's a little wheel over the far right. Exactly. Nailed it. Just kind of like last night and uh, as we were looking at some of these. But these can be also tailored to whatever it is. Yeah, like, again, there's so many to take a look at. But right. uh, they, might, yeah, they might be more relevant to positions there, Lee. Right. Yeah. So we could put in, um, I don't know, percent change. What We could add that in there. Yeah, and you, I saw you had the 52-week high. Shoot, you could do that too, you know, yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me just move the uh, this one up. And I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. so that'd be first. Mm -hmm. So we change that, and now we have percent change as one of our first columns. Right, right, which is totally cool. Yeah, because you yeah. get that as part of your existing positions. Yep. Right. Now, now Michael... I've seen some of your webcasts, and what I thought was pretty cool that I cannot do on Street Smart Edge is you can break down your positions into different buckets, I believe. And maybe yeah. you can show me how to do that because that's very useful. Maybe you put your swing trades in one bucket or your option trades in another bucket, but just show us how to do that. It's a really interesting feature. Yeah, it's a great point, Lee. And, uh, part of the new layout. So say, for example, uh, if we wanted to organize, you know, some of those positions right there, they were based on, you know, short puts or whatever the case might be, you could just right, right click on it. Exactly. And scoot on down and uh, move to group. Now we don't have any group. So this is where we can actually create them, right? Exactly. Yep. Right into the add group. We could okay. select that and uh, that would put up there for us. Uh, a group and let's see there it is gotcha i was i was worried there for one second <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's on my other monitor there so i, I pulled it okay. over uh yeah so let's just say this is our longer term trades yeah on home depot okay so i'll do that so now we have a group and now we see that we can put home depot in there and it went in there and there we go. And we can we can collapse that. You know, we have uh, Verizon here. We can, we have an option as well as stock. You know, we could move this into an option group. Obviously, you get uh, all of that. We, we have a question here. What is the buying power um, 
buying power effect column mean? Yeah, buying power effect. Uh, and so it might not be showing that, up here. Be, yeah. yeah, that'd be in the, it'd be up here, right, somewhere? Yes, uh, yep, and we would get it, um, yeah, and a lot of times you'll see it when you're putting in a trade order as well. Right. Yeah, so buying power effect, it can just be like oftentimes just the, the requirement. I mean, if you're, obviously, if you're, let's say if you were selling an option, it might be a margin requirement. Um, but uh, otherwise, it would just be the amount required uh, for the purchase. Okay. Now, yeah, Lee, also, if there, by the way, if there are uh, margin, if you've got a margin account versus others, obviously, those numbers could change. Okay. Um, all right. So we kind of did the positions. You can, there's so many columns that you can add many more than in Street Smart Edge. Again, you can group your positions by things that you are doing uh, in these groups. But let's go back to Street Smart Edge again, because we, we haven't finished going over in detail this positions box. So let's start here. We have a order status. So here I have some orders. Uh, in my Street Smart Edge demo account, a partial fill on AT&T and some filled orders here. How do I get my order status on Thinkorswim? Yes, great, great point. Uh, it would, would take us back to the monitor tab, which we're at right there. And uh, just below that monitor tab, uh, today's trade activity there, Lee. Uh, and by the way, it's in under activity and positions, which is the sub tab, which is the, the normal right. default. You've got that. Yep. Uh, so we've got that right there. But uh, the working orders would show that. Uh, all right. So right these there. are my order status, huh? These mm -hmm. are working. Now, that's not all of my orders, though. Um, there seems to be more, right? There's, it right. breaks them down nicely, right? I've got these are my filled orders from yesterday. Exactly. And we see cancel orders here too it'll actually have, have a cancel order there yeah and uh if we go to the sub tab account statement just to the right of activity and positions uh, you can go in here too and this will give you kind of a pullback over longer periods of time if you ever did want to just get that trade history or order history uh because order history notice there as you see it it does mm -hmm. actually have that filled trade it could have canceled trades in there as well if you're going uh, back a day, yeah. Okay, that's one day. But can I go back farther than that? Yes. In fact, you can go back more than a year. I think the limit's about 370, 370 days. So it gives you a lot of a lot of data to take a look at. You get a full year's worth of time going back just by clicking on that. Uh, and the way I normally will do it is it's just in that first box where it says days back from. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to hit the max, the max right there is it states actually at the bottom. It says uh, 370. It's got a little bit there to choose from, but uh, you can also uh, type over that too if oh, you want. Max. Yeah, maximum period 370. All yeah. right, so how do, I set it, how do I set it to the maximum period though? What you do is you would just, uh, in that spot where it has one, you can actually just put 370 in there. Ah, okay. So you can just type it then. That's good. Yeah. Okay, it's not a drop down. Typing. Okay. That's the word I was right. missing. Typing. All right. Good. There you go. Oh, yeah. So we got some more detail there. Yes. Because right, exactly. it went back a little further. All yeah, right. And, and really cool, too, Lee, because, you know, a lot of times you can come back here and just test like strategies and say, gosh, you know, I had some good success over this three month period of time. What positions did I have there? And you got it right at your fingertips. Yeah, that's great. Uh, now, from the order status on Street Smart Edge, let me go back there. Uh, if I wanted to do something with this order, I would right click on it and, you know, I can I can cancel it. I can change it. Um, how would I change one of these orders on Thinkorswim? Let me go back over to Thinkorswim here. So I have an open order here or a working. Oh, that, this one was filled, wasn't it? Um, so it is. No, these are working. OK, so how would I change it or cancel yeah. it? Good, good point, because this comes up frequently with a lot of a lot of traders, of course. Yeah, um, right clicking here will give us the opportunity. Oh, and it's got it blacked out. And I'm wondering if it's probably because I, I can the account think. statement. Yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, on the account side. Too. Yeah. Yeah. To uh, give any positions. There you go. Uh, yeah, okay. so working. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're working order here. Then there we go. So we right click on the order, a working order, and then I see these are all the right clicking then gives me all of those choices, but also there's many more things on this drop down that there are on Street Smart Edge. Uh, you know, you can cancel the whole OCO group. You can uh, 
create opposite orders, you know, without having to you know, just flip things around for you, without having to do a lot of work. And uh, you can analyze a trade. We'll talk about that a, a little bit later. But yeah, that, that's really good. So you right click and then you just cancel or change your orders from your working order place on the monitor tab. Did I get that right? You got it exactly right. And the thing here too, Lee, is you'll notice that a lot of times on the platform, the right click opens up the some of the functionality and then the left click is the selection. So you wouldn't want to do another right click just as a side note, but yeah, right. I think that's, yeah, most people. Yeah. And then I would left and I would left click on cancel. For instance. Exactly. I, to, I just cancel that one. Ah, okay. And I just did it. Okay. All right. Let's, but we're not done with the account box over there on street smart edge. So I'm going to go back again and I see that the next tab is alerts. Now I know how to create an alert on Street Smart Edge, I just hit the Create Alert button and I get this little box where I can do several things. But what I want to know is on the account monitor there, uh, I don't see alert. How do you set alerts on Thinkorswim? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, an alert on there. So there are a, a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, a lot of times uh, traders might start off with uh, actually, well, under the uh, charts, believe it or not, right in the middle of the charts. OK, just by right clicking again, you know, opening up the functionality, you can go down and you can create an alert. Yeah, right from the chart, right from the chart, right from okay. the chart. Yeah. And you can select, you can make selections there uh, right under price. First of all, you got price selections, Lee. All right. And so just yeah, go ahead. So, so what does the term mark mean on Thinkorswim? I've been asked that before. Yeah, so mark is actually like the market price, which is oftentimes the last price, and oftentimes okay. it's going to sit at the ask or the bid or somewhere in the middle there. Okay. All right. So if I wanted to say I want Microsoft, I want to be updated, you know, we have all this at or below, at or above, below or above, and it can put in the price here. You unlock that. You could offset it by a certain percent. Um, you do that. Let's just put in, uh, if it ever gets to 500, I want to know. Okay. And then, all right, I put that in there. I might want to put a, I can put a note in there to tell me what I'm doing. Exactly. Um, Microsoft upside alert. Okay. And then there's more things down here, like notify with options. So can you go over all that stuff too? 100%. Absolutely. In fact, uh, while we're on this page here, uh, uh -huh. right, uh, where it says Microsoft up top, just to the right of Microsoft where it says spread, mm -hmm. uh, that's where we can select the options. So we could click on that and then just select single up top, uh -huh. for example. Yeah. And with this is really cool functionality actually under price there, uh, uh -huh. just below. Notice there's also Delta. So if the price moved into a different delta range, and some people like to roll options at different deltas, you could get notified of that as well there, Lee. Wow, now that's something you cannot do on Street Smart Edge. And we'll see when we do some option trading here, uh, uh, we can see the Greek. So this is, this is really interesting. This is a way uh, that people can keep track of maybe their option portfolio to a certain extent, right? 100%, yeah, around uh, different ranges that they might have seen, you know, probabilities, however they might like to use it around 70% or whatever the case might be. Yeah, for sure. And then initially we spoke about how to set up those alerts just so you are notified uh, appropriately or correctly. And that right, would so be let's go back. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You know, let's just go back to our, uh, finish up. Yeah. yeah, just our $500 here. Um, set this for 500 again. Okay, so that was interesting, all the things you can do with that, though. Yeah. There's nothing like that on Street Smart Edge. Um, okay, notify with. Can you go over that with me? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so notify with. Um, yeah, so it's got some points listed there. there so there are three key ways that you mm -hmm. can be notified. Uh, the computer can make a sound. Uh, but of course, you're not always around your computer, especially like on long-term support level breaks or whatever the case might be. Right. You, you specifically will be at the beach, I know, you know, by your house. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and so you might want to be notified on that. But so it's got some sounds there, too, that you can uh, create. Okay. 
But what if I'm uh, not near my computer? Right. So in that case, we have to set up the mobile device. Uh, and sometimes those mobile devices work with email as well. And so okay. to do this, yeah, to do this, we've got to go back to the original setup that we looked at yesterday, upper right-hand corner uh, for notifications. Exactly. Okay. And it might require, uh, yeah, just close yeah. that initially. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so we go here to uh, application settings, and then we go to notifications. Ah, I see. Okay, so this is where you'd put in your email address. Exactly. And uh, you notice we are in uh, paper money as it, as it shows right. the upper left hand corner. So we only get to use email at this case in this case. OK, uh, if anybody's in their live account, you have access to uh, SMS or text messages, which are really great because I normally get those about, you know, three to five seconds or so after they trigger. Pretty quick. Oh, cool. OK, so that, that's really good to know, too. Uh, excellent. All right. So you can do that. And then. Right. Um, that's really good. So on the on the version, on the live version, you can put in a, a phone number, right? You can. You can. It will have it just below this section. And like I said, because it is software, it will remember it every time. You just have to go back into it if you ever want to change the number, but it will always remember it going forward. Okay. Now, how do I know where my alerts are, or my existing alerts? Oh, yeah. Great question. Because this is a little bit hidden here. It's, it's actually under. So um, the analyze tab okay okay and uh no i'm sorry it's not i get this one it's under the market watch tab yeah <laughs> good one yeah okay. and then you'll see it right there under the uh there you okay. go nailed it sub tab alerts right there all right so had i actually placed that one on yes. microsoft it would show up here it'll show all of them here let's go back and set an alert just so we can sh show how it shows up there so i'm going to go back to the chart and we'll just set an alert we'll just set that one we wanted to if microsoft goes up to 500 again just so we can show where the, how it shows yeah. up perfect yeah these are good too i'm glad you brought that up because you know a lot of times you might forget what's out there it's a good way to remind remind yourself hey what was i looking at too yep <clears throat> okay oh i see it put something on the chart tell me about that yeah, absolutely. So uh, that is just a notifier, just kind of like we saw yesterday, how you showed us, you know, like you can change orders and move orders around on the chart. You can move alerts as well, which is really cool because it's going to match up with the 500 price over there on the uh, the Y axis there. On the, the, I should say the price axis. Yeah. Uh, and so you can move that up and down at a different alert level. There you go. Nailed it. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now if we go back to the market watch tab, remember market watch is where we showed you how to import watch lists yesterday. It does other things as well, but that was the main reason we looked at it yesterday. But now we're going to look at the alerts and there it is. I see my existing alert. Yep. And if I right click on it, I can cancel it. I can change it. Um, yeah, it's great. You can actually do all of that thing just with a right click. We, That's we good. Because... The right clicks down. That was awesome. Because that I was yeah, yeah. about it, but you know, you nailed it. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's go back to Street Smart Edge. And the next thing is we did positions, balances. So here's the balances. Where do we get balances again on? We covered this briefly yesterday, but let's go in a little bit more detail now. Where do I get balances on my accounts here? And remember, on accounts, your accounts are in a drop down at the top. We covered this yesterday as well, uh, just like they are in Street Smart Edge, which are more in the corner, but it's right in the middle here. And also notice when you open up one of your accounts, it also shows you your sub accounts, like we did one for longer term trade. So you got plenty of information here okay how do i get my balances then okay so that's back under the monitor tab as well so anytime you're thinking about positions or balances just a great place to go folks just right where lee's at uh, and then you know once you've got that it's just a sub tab uh moving over one to the right uh to account statement there mm -hmm. exactly so looking at balances so uh what we can do because and I, by the way yeah exactly closing that down well, i i remember talking to people about this and they could never find it because they had <laughs> all these other ones opened up you know and they couldn't see the top one uh which is where we find that it which is cash and sweet vehicle for our balances you can see a balance listed there but this will give us a ledger now this hmm, is every day 
Yeah, 375 days. You might not want that many. Uh, right. let's say if, <laughs> if somebody's, but unless you wanted to look for, a, like I've done this, like looking for an old dividend, making sure an old dividend was paid to me, you know, and so I've done that just to confirm that. But uh, clicking on where it says transactions only, just to the right of the number. Yep. Here. Just a left click. Yep, exactly. We can ah, okay. yes. designate. There's your dividends in case you didn't want to see everything. You know, okay. there. maybe you just want to see the trades. Let's see what that looks like. Yes, precisely. Do you hit reset once you do that? Uh, I think you just click elsewhere. You could, okay, elsewhere. There you go. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. it shows us our trades from yesterday. Look at that. Perfect. So you're running, you're running totals uh, going back uh, 370 uh, days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, so that's where we get our balances. And let's go back to the account box on Street Smart Edge. And realize gains or loss. We just went over transaction. Realize gains or loss. Um, yeah, how do I get that? It's probably in the monitor tab somewhere, but why don't you show me where? Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, for example, if we went to back to activity and positions here, we can actually look at the positions down uh, below towards the bottom. Exactly. Uh, position statement off to the right there. And okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that one of those columns uh, that you'd set up, Lee, you know, um, maybe it came as a default too within the new layout, but uh, PL open is a common one that. Uh, okay. Kind it's of considering. Mm -hmm. All right. So it shows me um, how I'm doing on every open position and then shows me how I'm doing on those positions for the day. So this is since the time of acquisition or sale, this is today. And then at the top of, we did this yesterday too, at the top of Street Smart Edge, there's those balances field, you know, how am I doing? Well, you get it, you get it right here. P&L, how you're doing, P&L for the day, and overall P&L year to date. Exactly. Yeah, and did you notice when you when you pointed on uh, one of those columns, a PL open, and I think some of the PLs have this, but if you point on the price value, um, it will actually give you even more detailed information right at your fingertips. I, this is pretty cool to use, just a left click there. I see. So this shows you how you can get your cost basis on these, right? Exactly, when you bought it which is a okay. lot of times just something traders want to know. Like, I've only got made this much. How long have I held this? Is this uh, is this option or, or stock? How is it doing type thing? And that can give you a good little breakdown. So you don't actually have to break it all the way down into the account statement, you know, to find it specifically. This is okay. just a good quick way to, to get to those uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. All right. Well, I think we covered the account box. Let's move over to the trading box on Street Smart Edge. I'm going to spend some time on this. All right. So first thing is uh, we set it up for we can get level two here. It shows everything. It shows time and sales over here. And so we need to know how we get that on thinkorswim. And also right now we're on the... Um, kind of the stocks tab or the market depth. Uh, we're gonna go over these other tabs in a second. So let's go over to Thinkorswim and show me how to set up uh, level two and time and sales of where I can get it. Okay, sounds good. And, and it could come down just to the preference as well. You know, do traders okay. oftentimes look at charts or do they wanna sit in the gadget, you know, on the main, uh, kind of a main page. But I think charts is probably a pretty common one there, Lee. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. So it's a right level, sidebar. I yeah. see. So I could have level two right here. Exactly. Yep. And if I wanted to add time and sales, I can hit the time and sales button too. Is that what that means? TNS? Exactly. Yep. You can put them together right onto the right side. Exactly. And uh, so you've got that really easy too. And, and just to get rid of it, you just click it on it again. But uh, a lot of times, you know, spe specifically like shorter term traders might, you know, certainly be looking at those two there, Lee. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. All right. I'll take those off. All right. Um, all right. So to do a stock trade, there's all sorts of ways to do it. But again, you can trade from the chart just by right clicking, buy, sell or more 
interesting orders. Or you can go to the trade tab. Let's spend some time on the trade tab because sometimes it looks a little confusing for some people. So um, walk me through, uh, let's put a different symbol in here. Walk me through in order to buy some at and I'm going to put at and in the symbol box. So how do I do a stock trade in detail? Yeah, in detail. Okay. So what we can do is we've got the columns up top, as you can see, right under underlying the bid and ask prices. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, you got more columns as well. And by the way, if you click on, you read my mind. There we go. Yeah, yeah. look at this. Okay. Yeah, some additional details. You know, if it's got a dividend, and by the way, this one is a good one to look. I mean, no, in terms of it does have a dividend, basically. Right. Um, as we can see, PE ratios and other things, but uh, specifically for the orderly, but yeah. looking at buy. Yeah, we could just simply either just a, one simple left click on the ask price. Of course, there is more functionality if there is a right click. Uh, so I, oh, I see. I have a right click there. So I could just left click and it'll, oh, I see it pops up in order mask right here. Exactly. Okay. And then uh, one thing you might want to know here, this is like uh, Schwab.com, right? If you want your limit order to float with the ask, you have this little thing off. If you want it to be a static price that doesn't float, you put on the um, the lock, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's great, great. Especially if you're like looking at the order for a while, maybe maybe the the market's moved away from your price, and you're like, why didn't I get a fill? Well, because yeah. it wasn't open to where the market is, as it just stated there. That's a good catch. All right, and then um, my order types are in here: market limit, stop, stop limit, trailing stop. Trailing stop limit, market on close, and what's LLC? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Last on close, uh, maybe towards the end. It's a yeah, uh, the last exactly. trade. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the last trade, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, and then, right, yeah. and then we have all of our days and good tail cancels in here. And good tell cancel is extended. That means it shows in the extended, your order is exposed to the extended sessions as well as the regular session, right? Yes, just as you said, it's sessions, as you said. So early morning or, or afternoon as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's just, uh, well, let's put a limit order in there. It, it won't fill, obviously, because the market's closed, but let's just go through the process. So let's go to confirm and send. All right. Now, this is this is interesting, right? Yep. Tell me about that. So this is something you can't do on Street Smart Edge. Can you put this in multiple accounts to trade? Uh, you you actually could. There there is a way to place it through multiple accounts. Now, if we were to select on that, and we're in paper money, so I'm not sure if we'll, it will work ex exactly the same. Okay. But okay, you know, Lee, that's exactly how you would do it. If let's say you wanted to do the exact same. Per okay, I see. Go. I see. So it's going to put 50 shares in this account, 50 shares in that account. Um, yeah, you can't do that on Street Smart Edge. So that is a, a very interesting um, feature there. Yeah, and then, yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go confirm and send this then. Uh, also, remember, you can put it right away into if this is a long term trade, we could put it right in our long term trade account, too, just like doing that. And then we just hit send. And then it'll show up under the monitor now in our working orders right up here. And remember, again, right click to cancel, replace that order. Okay, so we know how to do a stock trade. That That's pretty interesting. Uh, let's just go over uh, the other. Uh, let's go from the chart again and just go over. Uh, it shows it on the chart if that's how you have your chart set up. Let's go over and... Let's put in a different symbol. And again, I right click on the chart. Now, again, you do bracket orders on Street Smart Edge. Here, it is called one cancels the other bracket. So if we choose this, we hit that, and it'll give me all of that information so I can set up my trade. Right. right. With your chart right there, too, which is kind of nice to just have there as a reference. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So we covered this yesterday a little bit, but, you know, if one cancels the other, you know, you would you probably make them all good till canceled. And, you know, your limit would be your potential profit, you know. So I mean, maybe if it gets up to four hundred dollars, we want to sell it uh, or again, 
we maybe want to risk it's at 361 maybe we want to risk down to 341 or something like that mm -hmm. again we're not really looking at the chart or doing anything other than just showing you a few things here and then we could make those good till cancel too all right and now we can confirm and send that now we have our entry order and we have our OCO, one is a stop, one is a limit. Remember on stop orders, it's the activation price. It's not actually where you get filled. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and send that. And look at how it puts it right on the chart for us too. Yeah, it's nice. And we're, we're after hours, right? So it hasn't even been filled. So if anybody wanted to change their mind and close it, you know, I mean, you could really do it quickly on the chart just with the drag and drop, as you showed, you know, yesterday. Or we could go back to the monitor tab and change those numbers. I, I always like the chart. I like the visual stuff, Lee. So. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, all right, as long as we're here on, uh, let's do uh, option trading next. Um, let's go back over to Street Smart Edge. So option chains. And uh, here I right click to change the columns and settings I want on my option chains. How do I do that on Thinkorswim? Okay, so it is uh, very, very similar in terms of once you got it up there, Lee, under the trade tab, exactly. Okay. You got, and by the way, you, yeah, you've got that option window open, but in case it's not, it would, might just say option window until we click on the little arrow itself. But uh, uh, exactly. Oh, okay. Sometimes yeah. Yeah, people yeah. won't even see it. They go, where's the chain? I, I see the word, but yeah, you actually got to click on the arrow. So it's pointing down. Exactly. Okay. And so there we've got it. We've got our, our months in there um, and uh, we can, we can click on that arrow again, or just anywhere on that row to pull one up. You got the time remaining uh, days within the contract, just off the right in parentheses as well. That one's got 129 days. Okay, and how do I change what I see up here, these columns? Oh, those columns? Okay, so that would be under the layout, just above uh, Delta, exactly right there. And the, the, the ones on top are, are the default ones, and those are right. very commonly used. Um, you can create a customized one, which is what I do, which is very similar to what we might do on a grid chart, and we've right. seen this before. But yeah, you can create your own. Uh, that you're just normally looking at, and you can create several of them too. Wow, yeah. So you can only put the let's just do a couple implied volatility and open interest. All right, now it adds the implied volatility and open interest. All right, so let's do just a long option, then we'll do one spread. Um, because we need to spend some time on charting too. So uh show me how if I wanted to. Let's take a look at the uh, open interest. This one's got a lot of open interest. It's 360. It's right around the money for August, a longer term trade. Tell me how I buy this thing. Sure, sure. And just as a one little just quick side note, yeah. back on that layout, if we just click it one more time, uh, I'm being probably really redundant here. But uh, once you customize something and you can you can save as, you'd save uh -huh. it as. And then it would just put it down below so you can always access it. Yeah, whatever you named it. And those are just normally, normally named by the columns. But then if you cool. click on that save, then it will be down under the layout uh, where you can just quickly go to it at the very bottom. There it is. Got it. That's really yeah. cool. Okay. All right. So okay. let's say I want to buy this August 360 call. What do I okay. do? So what we could do is we'd want to go to the ask uh, column over there uh, to the right. Um, we might. Let's see. Yeah, we go to the far right. I mean, that's one way to do it. You can click on the ask with the left click. So that is one functionality, just is very, very similar to like when we put a stock trade on, right? We can left click and it would just do like a straight call, or, excuse me, yeah, call option here is what you've got, Lee. Right. Uh, right. Of course, we could right click on the ask or we could actually right click on any of those columns that, that match that strike price to also buy and uh, create a custom order too, as long as we're okay. on the same strike price. All right, so let's go to uh, 360 here. And I'm going to right click anywhere on the line you said. Yep, anywhere on that line. Right. Oh, okay. You can also do it this way. Sure can. Yeah. Now, I, I want to stop here because when we hit buy, 
This is how we get to all of these different strategies. Let's go back to Street Smart Edge. And the way you get to strategies here, you know, is, um, you know, you just say what you want. They show up this way. That's how you choose your strategies there. But on Thinkorswim, as Mike is showing, there's all you just right click on the on the option and you can do all sorts of things. Right. And you can do all those different things. So let's do we'll we'll let's do a straight call on this and then we'll do a spread just to show people how to do a spread. Mm, perfect. All right. So I want to buy this 360 call. So I can again I can just click on the, the bid. I was also asked this, and Mike told me, um, if you want to get the level two on the option, you just hit the uh, the identifier, and this is how you get the level two on the option. Yeah, so nice. It's right on your screen, too, you know? Yeah. It's so cool for options, right, as opposed to stocks we were looking at before. Yeah. Right, so these are the level two on the option. All right, so uh, let's go ahead then to the 360 call. And I'm just gonna buy a single and it pops up this. And uh, there's a lot of premium in that one. Um, but let's just go ahead and, and place it. Maybe we'll just do it for tomorrow. So day order, this is you know the same drop downs here. And then we just go to confirm and send. And now we have our option trade and we will send that. All right, now if I wanted to do a spread on Street Smart edge you know maybe i just go to let's do a um credit spread let's do a vertical call spread so it sets it up here let's go over to think or swim from what you showed me i think i could just right click on here say buy and do a vertical is that right you sure could yeah right there right okay let's try that there you go Oh, look at it, and it puts in here. Now, can I modify this in any in any way? It gave me a five point spread here. What if I don't want that? Totally can, Lee. Yeah, just the the drop down, um, uh, the drop downs we can click on exactly right there will enable us to change the different strike prices. And there's Maybe another interesting way I'll show you too when you're done. Okay. Yeah, let me do the 360, 365 here, and then show me the next way. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So one thing that I always just kind of did myself when I set these up, I, I do like that approach, but sometimes I'll set it up uh, just right from the get go. So mm -hmm. um, actually, let's see if we were to minimize the order screen where we could just see the quote again, the uh, the option quotes. There you go. Um, perfect. And then just this. Let's see. We got. Um, there we go. Yeah, exactly. Lee. Sometimes okay. you have to collapse those or do exactly what you're doing. Just scroll down. That's perfect. Um, what we could do, like, so, so say, for example, if we were going to do uh, a short call vertical spread or whatever the case might be, we can click on the the ask price on the far right side initially. And mm -hmm. then uh, as we do that, we want to hold, you know, we can click on it initially. And then let's say for the sell end on the bid side. Um, so say, for example, Lee, you just click on that just like that itself. Left, okay. right, quick. Right, left, sorry, and it did that okay. perfect for us. Okay. Um, okay, so oops, now we've got to we got to go back to that other yeah where we can see it again where we can select uh, another option to click on the bid. So okay. I think we could actually just even uh, drop. Um, there we go. There we go. Perfect. And so now we could we can click on the three sixty five right Bef before yeah before we do that we have to hold the control button down and then simultaneously okay. click on it. On the okay, bid. do I want to click on the bid or the ask? Oh, the bid. Okay. Yeah, as you hold the control button down, bingo. And so that sets it up. And by the way, that that's gonna that functionality is gonna work. It's the control button on a PC or a Mac. Whichever one we're using. So okay, cool. All right, so I can do the spread that way. We got a five dollar spread, five thirty. Uh that's a ten dollar spread now. So now, before okay, let's uh, before I do that, I could go here on Street Smart Edge, and I could show the trade probabilities and all. How do I do that on this trade on Thinkorswim? Right. So what we want to do is uh, we can actually right click on the order down below uh, it, where it says vertical. 
So again, right-clicking functionality, um, just in the green area, exactly, uh, up a little higher, sorry. It's under the order entry. I'm not stating here. correctly. There we go. Yeah, we could just right-click in there. Uh, and then we can go create, or uh, excuse me, analyze uh, trade. Right. There's actually even an analyze opposite trade, but there you go. Analyze trade there, and it will pull ah. up analyze tab for us. Okay, so it shows us yeah. exactly the same type of graphs that we have on street smart edge sure does sure does it's so nice there's a there's some really cool uh, this we're getting a little deep in the weeds here but i know many of the people that are watching you know are really experts they're very good at options they've been using it you know think smart or excuse me street smart edge for a while and right. um there you go so there's a little more, more details here that they might be familiar with well, that's cool that's cool so we showed you how to do a spread simple spread we showed you to get the probability all the quick capabilities that you have in the trade box on Street Smart Edge, we've showed you where it is here. So now for the next 15 minutes, this is my favorite part, we're gonna go over trading. Cool, hey, sorry, I'm to get back to this. Can I just show you one last thing? One Absolutely. more piece of functionality? Okay, Absolutely. on there. Um, hate to take you away from the charts because that's my favorite <laughs> spot too. <laughs> but uh, just in the trade tab, uh, just as we were talking about setting up those trades, there is actually even a quicker way to do it for people that are using, let's say, doing a lot of verticals. So just to the left of the layout drop down, uh, we can click on where it says single, and we can actually select a vertical, and that's going to set up the option chain in a vertical format. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Yeah. So you can just click and buy and just exactly. buy the spread like that. And it's just going to create the entire spread. If, if, if you do a lot of spreads, maybe, you know, there you go. Well, that's great. I'm glad you showed me that. Okay, let's go to uh, charts on Street Smart Edge. All right, so here on Street Smart Edge, I know how to do several things. The first thing is I can tab my charts. As we mentioned quickly yesterday, you can't tab charts in Think or Swim, but you can do something almost better. And why don't you show me that with the grid tool? So we're going to go back over to, we're going to go to charts here. And then if I want to have two charts, like of different time frames, like this is a daily chart, but on Street Smart Edge, I could have a tab, you know, daily, a tab, which is five minutes. How would I put another chart in here? Yeah, Lee, so uh, right above the patterns and the, the patterns, uh, icon states it in the bar, far right hand corner uh, a quick way to do it uh exactly just the yeah right about exactly that box right there gives us full functionality in terms of putting in a number of different charts all on one screen of course these can be detached too but uh just a good quick way to put it on a single chart at least like okay that. all right Thanks. now so i'll put in um let's put in home depot again here and i can theoretically link these together so when I change it in one time frame, puts it in the other time frame as well. But I have to set up the time frame here. How do I do that? Uh, that would be under the, a five minute chart. Sure. The periodicity icon is a great way to do it. You can just click on the D right there. Yes. And uh, yeah, one of the defaults should be five minute. There you go. You can go. Yeah. And then how do I zoom on charts? Let's say I, I want to just look at the last kind of day here. How do I zoom in on that? Great question. Uh, it's, it's, we're going back to the left click mouse again. Okay. I, yeah, left click one time, pull it over the range you want there, Lee, and then just simply release it. And then. Okay. okay. Got it. All right. Yeah. And then, by the All way, right. to pull back out uh, at the bottom, they've got the little magnifying glasses. You just go to the minus sign. Exactly. Right there you go. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Right at the okay. bottom. All right. So we know how to change the. Uh, um, Periodicity, again, we can change the colors. We covered this a little bit yesterday. Let's go in a little bit more detail. Let's say I want a bar chart with a white background. How do I do that? Okay, sure. Uh, so what we could do is we could actually- Get on this one. Okay, perfect. By the way, that shaded area, those are just after hour sessions. On the five minute chart. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. And you can see the volume in there really relates to the, during the day anyways, but um, got it. Also, I want to point out, I learned this from watching you, when you have two charts, or, you know, you can have up 
you know, you could have six charts around here. If you want to make it do the full screen, even though you have two, you just right click on the chart and say maximize cell. And that exactly. makes it fill the, the full screen. Yeah. And then to, I love that room. Yeah. And to pull it back, you just uh, go to restore cells. Yeah. And you know what I like is I like a lot of times just look at the full screen. So um, if you can just go to the max just one more time as you had it, maximize that uh, left screen, for example, because I like to look at daily and weekly charts quite frequently. So if we were to max this one, just right click on that. And uh, exactly. Notice in the upper right hand corner where the grid is, there's some arrows there, left and right arrows. Just to the left of the grid above patterns. Yeah, we could just click and go through them. Such a fast way if you want to pull up a five minute chart like you've got, Lee. But, but it's all full, also full screen, right? Or a weekly yeah, chart. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because I mean, you know, uh, you can spend a lot of time looking at a weekly chart during the day. It doesn't do anything during the day. But if you want to just reference it, boom, you got it right there. Wow. Click, click. That's great. Okay, so let me make it into a white background okay. chart with bars. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go back to the wheel. Remember, a lot of different settings in the wheel, and there's an appearance tab in, inside the wheel. Kind of basically right in the middle. There we go. Yep. So, perfect. Uh, on the left-hand side, yeah, exactly. So, it gives us, first of all, what do we want to look at? I think candles are pretty common. I guess there are still, you know, charts or line charts, things along those lines. Yeah. So, it gives you the sort of uh, data, how you want to view that data. Uh, there and it shows what it looks like. Okay. Yes. And then, if I, how do I change the background? So the background is towards the bottom on the left hand side. You can't even actually even see the box because it's black. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And you got to select it to do it. And by the way, when it's white, you don't see the white one either. But just <laughs> know that there, there is a box to the left of background. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a nice in between color. Yeah, but you can't actually see the. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You got to watch that close. Yeah. yeah. All right. But, so and then we apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's my chart with bars and a white background. Let's go back to black because I can, this wasn't a great choice that I wanted. But that's good. And I'll just go right back and change it. Yeah, that caught me squinting at the screen for a second. Yeah, exactly. Let's go back to the black, black background. There we go. But we'll keep it on bars. All right, next thing. Let's go over to Street Smart Edge. To put on studies here, I would right click. And I would go to add study, and then it gives me this kind of uh, menu opening up. So how do I put studies on the Thinkorswim chart? Let's go back to Thinkorswim. What do I do? Okay, so studies themselves. So th there's a few different ways to do it. Uh, a lot of times for me, if you know the name of the study, Lee, that's just, there's just the quickest way to do it. And that's just by clicking the icon just to the left of the wheel, which is a little dropper icon there. Okay. So let's say I want the uh, the RSI. So if I know the name of it, I just type it in. Oh, there it so is. Much faster, exactly. And so I click on it. Got it. Mm -hmm. And there are some question oh. marks to the left of the RSI, just as a side note. It explains what that indicator does. Anytime any bonus see it, just a side note. But yeah, a little break. Yeah, that's right? really good. That's really especially if you you know you're trying on a new one. Right. Exactly. Or you see a new one pop up. Yeah. For sure. And then, Lee, off to the right-hand side, you can see there's a default that's commonly set. Now, I do use the default that originally came from Wells Wilder himself, but the wheel, back again to the wheel, if we click on that, we can change all uh, of those. Yes, and, and the colors, too, like you showed yesterday. Yeah, so you could, you could change the, um, the overbought level. You could make that maybe red or like purple. Mm -hmm. And the oh, width, soul width, level all that stuff. So you yeah, can, can do all of that. Sure. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can do all that. We'll just do one just to show you how to customize it. You customize the, the length. Maybe you want a 20, a 10 period rather RSI. You can change the overbought or oversold levels, which will be these lines down here. We'll click OK. Apply. And there we have it. Now, if I can't really see it, I can just drag up. And there it is. You got it. And, and Lee, since you have this set up right now, and, and because I think some people might set up a number of different indicators, actually, if you go to the style uh, tab, just to show you one thing while we've got it up there. Yeah, exactly. We can go down and save this style. Uh, sorry, at the bottom, you got it. Yep. 
we can save it, we can name it, you know, whatever that might be. And a lot of times I just make them very descriptive to whatever it is, you know, I've got on the chart, just like you did. Yep. And then save that. What this does for us now, if we were to go back into our grids in the upper right hand corner, and uh, if we were to go to, let's say, the second one that was five minute, but let's say we, you know, like commonly we like an RSI on it or something, we can just go down to the style now and load that style up, saving us just a lot of time adding indicators to, let's say, a multitude yeah. of charts. Yeah. That you might have. And there, go, there I went. Very cool. That's cool. Yeah. Just say, it's a time saving. Uh, process for sure especially if you got a lot of indicators across a number of different charts and you like different time frames yeah all right okay um another thing so to zoom we talked about you just do that mm -hmm. and then we should point out that there are just so many more indicators available here than on Street Smart Edge. The other thing is, this isn't for everybody, but you can create your own indicators on Street Smart Edge too. If you know ThinkScript, which we have a webcast on that every Friday, you know you can program in your own indicators, which you can't do obviously on Street Smart Edge. If you have uh, another indicator, that maybe you bought or something, you can import them too. Yeah, and those those indicators too, uh, you can scan for them if you know, like stocks crossing above a moving average, things like that. So, really, a ton of capabilities. In fact, Lee, there's one on here. Uh, unless you were going somewhere right now, I was just going to mention real quick before I forget. Yeah, uh, go ahead. That, that I use frequently. So, uh, just did a quick note. Uh, the drawing tools again, back in the bottom right hand corner. If we click on that, um, that's one way to do it. Yeah, I, I tend to use the one at the bottom, the little one just to the right of the magnifying glasses. It's, it's like a, a quick reference. Yes, right there. Um, and you can pull up, say, for example, a trend line, which is up at the top. So this is just saves you a couple clicks if you do that. But let's say uh, if we were to do a trend line, um, let's say, yeah, exactly, like off the bottom of the chart. Okay. Now, that's a little different than Street Smart Edge. Now, Street Smart Edge, I would just draw it. Here, you got to start it by clicking, draw it, and then click again. Yeah, and it gives you a little window. It gives you the number of bars and the, the calendar time and the percentage change as well. So you get all yeah. that. Look um, at that. If you, yeah. yeah, if you right click on that too, uh, I hope we have the functionality. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? We Oh, it's, it's uh, paper money. Uh, we okay. don't have it, but one of the cool functions here is is you can you can create an alert on the drawing that you've chosen. So if it breaks uh, through, let's say a trend line, uh, uh -huh. then you could be notified of a trend line break, which sometimes does precede like a tr a change in trend, for example. Wow, that's cool. That's very cool. I can't do that on Street Smart Edge either. Yeah, so just some additional functionality with the live, you know, that you've seen here and there, but uh, it's on there when you just right click on uh, the symbol. And that could be a moving average as well, if you want to do that. Okay. All right, cool. So uh, speaking of moving averages, uh, there was a question on conditional orders. Um, and I thought this would be a good time to do it. So let's do here on Ford, let's put up. Uh, the 50 day moving average. So again, to, I'm going to take off the trend line. I can just right click on the trend line and say remove it. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And to put on a moving average, again, I want a simple moving average. I know what it's called. So I just type in simple moving average. I'll bring that over. And then we're going to make that 50 days. Okay, so it looks like this one has been holding the 50-day moving average. Now, I have been asked, I gave hundreds, literally hundreds of webcasts on Street Smart Edge. And I and we talk about, you know, can you trail a stop on a moving average? No, you can't. People always want to do that. So I thought I would at least show you how to trail a stop on a moving average. Okay, because I get asked that so much. So let's show you how to do that.
All right, so we'll right click in here. We will buy custom with stop. Okay, so let's say uh, I want to buy this at 1235, but I only want to get out if it crosses below the 50 day moving average. So it'll trail on the 50 day moving average. The way I do that is I go over here and notice when you put your cursor over here, it's hard to see. There's that little, little gear. So you click that. And this opens up the conditional order window, right? And then this is one thing I did want to do because people, so many people ask me about it. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll here with, uh, so the symbol, uh, what we want to do here is go ahead and do, oh, this is paper money. I'm sorry, you can't do it on paper money. I'm sorry. Let's go, let's go to the live one. So I can show that. Cool. I'm going to log in again on real money or real demo. That's one advantage that Web has, Lee, that we'll talk about tomorrow is that you, know, you can just flip back and forth between the two. Of course, you don't get all the capabilities, but right. that's one little thing. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go into live trading. Again, I'm going to put in our kind of weird user ID. So weird that I mistyped it. Okay. That little technical support number too, I've noticed that at the bottom anytime. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's put up Ford here. Up Ford. All right, and I don't have to put the 50 day moving average on the chart, but what I can do is go here, buy custom with stop. Okay, go over here to the right hand side where the gears open up, click that little gear. I'll make it bigger by getting rid of the side panel here. Okay, it's going to pop this window that I'm going to drag from my other monitor. So for F Ford, I want to study. How do I do that? I forgot now. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. Uh I think if you use, uh, click under the symbol, it should have, let's see, you click in there? Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, it should oh, open I, up. Oh, yeah, it does. Maybe it's not working on the. Yeah, yeah it's not working right now. Okay. But anyway, okay. what you would what you would do Possible, is, though, yeah. yeah, is is the method would be study. And you can just say, if the moving average drops or goes up above the stock, Mm -hmm. then you want to sell it because remember if the stock is is dropping when it crosses the moving average the moving average actually goes above so that's how you do it uh yeah so unfortunately that didn't work today for us but yeah um, but we'll, we'll show you that maybe yeah. again yeah well as soon as you can click under the symbol everybody who tries it you know uh yeah you can just fill it out yeah so it'll, it'll fill it open out. up yep yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's kind of our presentation. Uh, let's look at some of the questions. Okay. So the first, this is Thinkorswim desktop. We are recording this. Uh, okay. Here's one for you, Michael. Is there a way to replicate the customized layout on the activity and positions tab? I brought one account over to toss, worked on the layouts, but when I brought another account over, it didn't do it. Oh, let's see. Uh, what was the first part of that question, Lee? I'm sorry. I was reading. Yeah, it was. Uh, is there a way to replicate the customized layout on the activity and positions tab? So the activity and positions tab oh, is 
is over here, Ividium positions. And he had, he had uh, apparently customized uh, these columns. But then when he opened up another account, account, it wasn't there. But can't you save this, everything as a setup? Uh, let's see. It would be yes. Save works. Let's see. That's yeah. the workspace. I think you could save the workspace. Uh, I'm trying to think if um, that's a really good question because I don't know if I've ever done it before. Uh, yeah. There's not a yeah. Let me just click on a couple of these. Just see. Uh, you you know once you set it up. Uh, normally you would have it the way we showed it earlier, you know, it, it's just going to be there every time for you when you sign into it. And you can adjust things, of course, uh, with different, the different things that we had mentioned, but like you said, I mean, there is a, like, I don't know, if you change, it it change the account, does it, let's just see if it, um, It looks like it sets it up for all accounts. Yeah, it looks like it does set it up for all accounts. So, yeah. you know, you might want to just save the workplace. And it should save all those columns for you. Exactly. Yes. If you had separate workspaces, absolutely, truly. Yep. Right. Right. And these these are like the, the layout tabs across the top of Street Smart Edge. We go over there. So those those are like these, you know, there's different setups the way your thing looks. And then the analogous situation here is a workspace. So you can save different workspaces like that. Yep, and those would just those would show up at the bottom just like we showed on some of these other methods. It's the same approach anytime you're in a different field, yeah. You could find them at the bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um let's see. Okay. In Thinkorswim desktop, can you sell specific lots? Oh, like a um, like let's a say we bought first in, we first bought things or whatever. Yeah. Or let's say you have four. You bought things f four times. Can you click on that trade and uh, let's buy? Um, no, we won't be able to do it. Um. Let's yeah, see. You can certainly sell different quantity amounts, um, but maybe so, if it's first shares or last shares, I think you have to get that organized probably on the back end with uh, the firm, if that's the question. Yeah. Well, now we saw that you can get. Um, it'll show the trades, but you can't just sell this particular lot if there was two of them, right? You can't just click on that and sell it. Right. You could sell a hundred shares. It might be the first or last, depending upon um, sort of the accounting approach you're using, LIFO or FIFO, for example, last in, first, yeah. out or first in, first out. Yeah. And you can set that up on the Schwab.com website. Oh, Street, that, is, that is something you can do on Street Smart Edge. You can um, open it up and choose a specific lot. Oh, I see. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can do that on the platform. I have not seen it yet. But maybe that could be a capability down the road if that was a request. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, what about this? This is a good question. We need to address it. Uh, what is, about peripheral tools available in Street Smart Edge, like Idea Hub and Market Edge? Is there something similar in TOS? No, unfortunately, there there isn't. Um, If we go to Street Smart Edge, the the ones, yeah, yeah the, now you can get Market Edge. Um, the Market Edge. If you go to analyze a company, I think you can get Market Edge. You can't get the whole thing, but you can get the opinion. If we go here to, um, let me go back over to Think or Swim. If we go to analyze, we go to fundamentals. We scroll. Yes. We're going to put the symbol in here. Okay, you will get the market edge rating. Okay, and you can click on it. The it's down loading down. on. Yeah. Perfect. And it will give you, so 
This is here, yes. This part, you can get the market edge on, on a stock from the fundamentals tab. Um, so I showed you how to do that. And then you get the other reports here under fundamentals. Now, you, you don't get fundamentals on uh, – you know, good fundamentals on paper money, but there's great fundamental stuff here. If you want to do research right on the platform on fundamentals, yeah, you can do what, it. Right. I was just Go one ahead. of the questions was just where to find uh, the dividend info uh, on the yeah. fundamentals tab. And and it was just up a little bit from where you were at. Uh, or sorry, uh, down from there, actually. Just yeah, sure. Sure. yeah. A little bit further down. I think it's at the end of all this price data right there under valuations. And do you have dividend yield? Yeah, oh, yeah, right there. Price, right there. Dividend yeah. yield, dividend payout ratio. They put them right together. That's nice. So you don't have to redo it. Right. And then the other question, they just said, can you show us on the trade tab where to find that? I think we might have shown it earlier, but maybe the client didn't yeah. see it. But uh, okay. yeah. yeah. So what you do is you have this in here. And I think you told me to click this arrow, right? And then it'll show you that if it has a dividend, it'll show you that right in the line here. The interesting thing, it also shows you the beta right there, too. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you, you get volatile. that as well. Yeah. Right. yeah, how volatile it is. Okay. Um, uh, well, I'll, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to keep answering the questions here. Uh, See. So we, we covered market edge. Uh, people ask about um, Recognia. Recognia is not coming over to Thinkorswim. Um, we have a question on that one. And then, let's see. Okay, we got that. We have a question on Fibonacci's on the charts. So um, let me get rid of all this. So let me find that question. Okay. Uh, Maybe where to find it or how to draw it possibly. Um, okay, when using the FIB yeah. tool on a chart, I keep getting zoomed instead of FIB extensions on the toss. Uh, all right, let's, um, why don't you walk, walk me through putting a, a, let's put a FIB on the chart from, uh, here to here and see what that retracement was and then see what he's with a client is is saying so uh, so you like to get your drawing set from down here you told me yeah just that icon just to the left of that like a little circle right there we're, we happen to be on zero right there yeah uh, there's a there's a couple of them too because those extensions that's the fibonacci and the one to the right that's just retracements the one to the right there is really cool mm -hmm. that's the extensions but uh yeah just like whichever one we want to choose initially uh just to get the yeah maybe that one okay so so, so and then we'll show the extension perfect too. all right so click there click there and then you get the retracement levels yeah and you can change those too by right clicking and you can modify the colors and just uh edit properties at the top i believe lee yeah yep. you can change the style you can change the width and all this. The other good thing, it shows you right where you were doing it from, or the dates that you use that um, for the last swing up as well. All right, now let's do the FIBIX. So I don't know if this is the question. So it didn't seem to zoom on me. Um, let us go and do the extensions and help me just draw an extension the way that you would do it. So let's take this off. Go to our tools down here. And this time we'll choose the extension. All right, so show me how to do an extension. Sure, Lee. So let, let's say we wanted to get the price range. Just like, let's just do the same price range that you chose off the bottom. So we can initially click on the bottom there and pull it to that same top level. And let's just say we thought that was a flag pattern that might have an extension of 100% or something. Oh, and by the way, if that ever happens, oh, that's okay to do that. No, you're good. That is the extension, actually. Sorry, it looks funny, but just click on it and then click, drag it to the top of that range. There you go. One time. And there's the extension. You do, yeah, you can move it. Let's say we thought it was going to extend off its lows. So like the lows in like exactly, uh, I'm sorry, there. one maybe to the right, uh, the right. There you go. 
like it was a flag pattern. You can see like right. the tracement higher, something like that. Yeah, like a hundred percent. Yeah. So it doesn't it that. doesn't seem to be zooming for us. So maybe um maybe yeah, if you watch the way that. we yeah. yeah, so maybe if you watch the way we did it, maybe that might answer your question. And then once you have it folding like that, you just click to fit it in there. Exactly. And I'll get rid of this. And those could be adjusted too anytime you wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the question there is a question if you save your paper money workspace, can you load that into your live account? Haven't seen that transfer. I have not seen that, but there is possibly a way that we could sh share it. Oh, this is interesting. We get to the sharing a little bit. If there's a share option there. Okay, uh, so let's. So, which I think right, there is, so we, actually. Yeah, so we could go to. So we want to share paper money with live. So let's go to paper money. Okay. Sign off. As you'll see on the web. Tomorrow, you can just go back and forth like like Michael said. So I got to relaunch our. Yeah. And also one thing, too, if uh, some computers, Lee, uh, mine does this. Uh, anyways, the laptop I'm on, you could actually, if you ever wanted to, you just got to be careful what you're doing. You just want to go down to the icon. You could right click on it and pull up Thinkorswim again. Mm hmm. And then if I click on it, I could open up another Thinkorswim. So technically, I could have a live and a paper up at the same time, just as long oh, as your computer okay. can do it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go to paper money. Yeah, put in the wrong password. Hang on. No worries. Was it a chart they were looking at? Possibly. We can pull that up or. Now we'll go back into paper money and see what we got. Okay. okay. Sounds good. There we go. Nice. It's a good question, though. I mean, it's it's one I haven't. It's a very good up, question. But it could save, yeah, especially if you spend a lot of time, you know, building up yeah. that paper money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we go, so let's say that I want my this the way I have everything set up here and all my tabs, we would save this as a workspace. Yes. So let's save this as. Um, What's today? Tuesday, Tuesday demo. All right, we'll save that. And now if we go here, then we can go share workspace. Exactly. Uh, did it save it? Oh, it bit. Yeah, no, it did. I, I just. Oh, I'll get you. Share workspace. I wanted to share that right one, so. Oh, got it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Tuesday demo last loaded. Was that the one? Yeah, share oh, workspace. Here I it can is. see it down below. It's yeah, here it is. Okay. There you go. Got it. Got All got right. It. So I want to share this. Exactly. Yeah. Which name would you like to use? Uh, nickname should be uh, demo or anything. Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I have a, a link. Now I can go, to, let's see if we can go and open that link as a, over there on uh, the real platform. Right. Or the live. We're gonna know these passwords real good. I know. <laughs> yep, for sure. Um, let's see. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, this is one I'm glad you're going through it, Lee, because I don't, I have not seen this done uh, before, although it's good to know it's possible. So won't, won't know unless we do it. That's right. Um, so, so yep. Yeah. Okay, open shared item. So there was the URL for that uh, preview. Choose the MDMO workspace, import. All right, so now let's go here to setup and Tuesday demo. There it is. There it is. There we go. So you can do it, and that's how you would do it. Nice to see it firsthand. Cool. Yeah, so you definitely can move your uh, paper money layouts to your live side, and yeah. I would assume vice versa. Exactly. Yeah, and if your computer allows it, some of the guys are saying, yeah, you can definitely open up paper and live at the same time if you ever wanted to. You have to have enough capabilities, obviously, to, to, to be able to have both running at the same time, especially during market hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see if there's a... Uh... Okay. Um, let me just see if, let's see. I don't know if there's any, yeah. Any other, are the other questions? So I think, uh, I think we got them all. So very good. So I guess uh, if there's any more questions, this is your last chance to send them in. Uh, yeah. Looks like Ben got us caught up though. Yeah, he did. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So thank you all for your kind attention. Uh, this was session two. We went over the detailed change from the account box on Street Smart Edge to the monitor tab on Thinkorswim. Then we went over all the sub tabs in the account box. Then we went over to the trading box on Street Smart Edge and showed you how to basically do the same type of trades. We also showed you how to set an alert. It's different than on Street Smart Edge because you do that from the account box. We showed you how to set the alerts here. And then finally, we did uh, charting. Obviously, uh, what we want to make sure you know Again, if you didn't attend yesterday, of course, yesterday is posted now. Let me show you where yesterday's is posted if you missed it. So I'm going to open up a browser. Okay, and you want to go to the Schwab YouTube channel. I happen to have that bookmarked. Okay, and then uh it'll be in it was in the top line a little while ago yeah here's yesterday's okay so if you didn't see yesterday's then you can just click here and watch it so i just want to make sure you knew about that but the also wh why we're here i just wanted to make sure you know there's all sorts of think or swim aids here okay number one if we go back to street smart edge there is the platform position tools transition, and there's all sorts of the guides are in here. A lot of things you can read. We went over yesterday how to use this to uh, move uh, webcats uh, uh, to move um, watch lists from Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim. Mm -hmm. And then if we go to um, what were we talking about? We wanted to go to uh, these. And so you want to go to uh, getting started with Thinkorswim. There's also Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim desktop. So we've been doing these on Thursdays, and they cover different areas here. But you can watch all of those, too, as well. And Go there. I would, and we have a question, try to show if you can have paper money and real at the same time. I'm not positive my computer can do that though. So I don't want to try, <laughs> but if you have enough, 
if you have enough power, you can definitely do that. You can have them both open at the same time. Absolutely. And then you can go back and forth. Yep. All right. So covered all of that. So thank you very much. Tomorrow is session three. And tomorrow we will go over again. We'll put up Street Smart Edge, and then we will show you if you find the desktop platform a little too much or just has you want something a little bit more streamlined, then tomorrow we will show you exactly the same functions on Street Smart Edge where you do it on the Thinkorswim web application. That'll be most of the uh, time tomorrow. And then we'll also do about 15 to 20 minutes on Thinkorswim mobile. We'll demonstrate that as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be at the same time tomorrow. That'll be session three. So I wanna thank Michael for joining me. I want to thank Ben in the uh, chat. Job, He's done man. a wonderful job. And there you go. So thank you very much. Take care.